When the world has got you down and Alzheimer's sucks. It's an equal opportunity disease that chips away at everything we hold dear. And to date, there's no cure. So until there is, we continue to fight with the most powerful tool in our arsenal, love. This is Love Conquers Alls, a real and really positive podcast that takes a deep dive into everything Alzheimer's, the good, the bad, and everything in between. And now, here are your hosts, Susie Singer-Carter and me, Don Priest. Hello, I'm Susie Singer-Carter. And I'm Don Priest, and this is Love Conquers Alls. Hello, Susan. Hi, Donald. We're getting gremlins again, but it's okay. We're going to get through this because we have a great guest today. We are. I'm we're excited. Pushing forward. Yes, yes. I'm in my new, yeah. a new, a new room here. You have new digs. Of same, same as I need more. It, it's a little boring back. It here, is though. boring back I there. Think, yeah, we'll have to. We'll have some, to juice. We'll have to juice you up back there. But in the, it doesn't matter because yeah. you're so dynamic. So who cares? And look this at your hair. True. I know it's very. It's very, uh, yeah, it's, it's very kind of, Michael Douglas today. Is it? Good. I <laughs> thought I looked bit. like a tele. <laughs> I thought I looked like a televangelist or something. I don't know. That too. <laughs> it's kind of a kind of a hybrid. So yeah, I hope everyone's okay. doing good. I just want to do a quick shout out before we get into our world of caregiving because we, you know how we get we get so deep into it. we forget to do any of our plugs. But I just wanted to remind everybody that our there's a whole season of fun with our other podcast, which is I Love Lucifer. The podcast, which is the comedy, podcast. horror, and uh, and it's uh, female driven. It's girl power, and it's super funny. And Adam Levy from The Witcher, and um, and which is on on uh, Netflix, and then also HBO's uh, Industry is a phenomenal actor. He's British, hello, and he is so good in it. You'll just love it. And it's just a just a great ride. And we've been nominated for seven Audioverse Awards, so we're really, really stoked about that. And um, hopefully by the next time we talk to you, we'll have had something exciting to say. Let's hope because, my gosh, at there's least so seven, no- At least seven awards. That's, that's all we can hope for, just seven. <laughs> that's good to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's available everywhere on all, you know, all your favorite podcast platforms. I Love Lucifer for the podcast. Check it out. If you like it, rate, review, share with people that, that are, you know, podcast aficionados. And it's a, uh, it's a yes. drama. It's fully cast. And it's, it's well, got it's a an comedy epic. Drama. <laughs> yeah, it's comedy drama. It's a, it's a, <laughs> and it's got an epic, epic sound design thanks to um, this gentleman here with the salt and, or what do you call your hair? Silver blonde? Uh, yeah, silver blonde. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and listen Wonderful. for this. Th- listen for this young lady as uh, one of the leads. She plays uh, one of the leads in it, and she's absolutely spectacular. So, yeah. Thank you. It's we a lot love of fun. us. We really do <laughs> love ourselves. If we don't, who will? <laughs> I don't know. But we also love our guests. We, we do, do love our guests. We have an amazing for- guest today. Before you start in with with all her wonderful um, accolades and and. Um, background about this woman i just been following her again as always like what i do how i meet people now these days is on instagram and and on on twitter and this this woman's so first of all she's adorable and she's got such a great um uh aura about her like very sweet and gentle and loving and um and all of her posts are just wonderful and she's just really tapped into the the community of caregiving and um and I, I'm very proud to have her on our on our show. Take well, it away, Dawn. Today's guest is Elizabeth Miller. And Elizabeth Miller is the founder and community content manager for Happy Healthy Caregiver, a lifestyle website, podcast, and consulting business that helps family caregivers create time for what they love and find time for their own self-care while juggling the responsibilities of caregiving. A certified caregiving consultant, she is the author of Just For You, a daily self-care journal. She's the leader of Atlanta Daughterhood Circle, a support group for family caregivers, and a national caregiving conference presenter and keynote speaker for dozens of employers, organizations, and caregiver appreciation events. Suffice it to say, Elizabeth Miller knows a little something about caregiving, and we can't wait to find out more. So let's say welcome to Elizabeth Miller. Hello, Elizabeth. Hey, Don and Susie. So great to be here and meet you all in person. 
It's so yeah, great it's... to meet you. And what a, what a what a force you are in this community. And, and I'm just wowed by everything you've done. Your TED Talks and, and, and your just everything. Thank You're you. just really a force. Yeah. Yeah, and I love your philosophy about taking care of yourself and the person you're taking care of, of which is so important. And we forget that and, you know, it's... We it's, had to learn it the really, hard way, right? To, yep, 100%. Yeah. Elizabeth, I was going to tell you, it's just so, you know, how the universe works. I, I'm looking at my phone because I got a text message from a lovely woman, a good friend of mine, who's going through the last stages of dementia with her mother and... and um, they're, you know, a different, they're, they have a different um, culture. And so the cultural differences also, mm -hmm. you know, play into that. And um, she's, she's telling me, she's asking me, you know, did your mom get agitated and, and horribly, you know, aggressive and, and it's so hard. And, and this is a woman that ha could like show run three shows at one time. Mm -hmm. She's a, she's a force and she is, just literally fall i mean it's just so much energy for her and she said i'm just at my wits end and i said you have to take care of yourself you have to if you you can't feel guilty you have to take care of yourself so you're you're the perfect guest for my friend sudi who needs to hear everything that you've got to say uh, well yes i mean if you have to take care of yourself and what we try to do and what i try to do is I wanted to know what that looked like. Like, what does that look like? I know I should do this, but how? What does it look like when you're in the midst of a caregiving life and juggling all kinds of things, work and kids and, and whatnot? So it's, it's trying on a lot of things and seeing what works. Absolutely, absolutely. So, well, why don't you, let's, let's back up a little bit and just give us a little bit of your background. How did you, how did you end up being smack dab in the middle of all this? What, what brought you here? Well, probably like most people, not by choice, right? You just kind of, uh, for me though, I saw it coming as a mudslide. I had two uh, parents with chronic health conditions. I affectionately called them a, a cocktail of different health conditions. They had heart disease and diabetes and sleep apnea, morbidly obese, mobility issues, like I, I, it could keep going, right? Different autoimmune diseases. And I was learning about caregiving and I was overwhelmed and, and frustrated. I was the peak of my career, my husband as well. Um, his mom had lung cancer at the same time. So we were drowning, oh drowning and found ourselves in the midst of the sandwich generation, caring for our active kids, wanting to be you know, in that life and then having all of these right. pressing demands. And like most people, you know, I, I, I am a positive person by nature. I, want to figure it out. I was ready to roll up my sleeves and dig in. I didn't even know what I was called. I started looking for books. I'm an avid reader, but I didn't have a lot of time to read them and didn't find a lot of books that I didn't even know what I was searching for. So I um, have always found writing to be a cathartic part in my life. And so I started blogging and writing and then layering on some of these other things uh, to help me in the process of hopefully helping other people. And I, I created something which I wish existed for me, you know, over seven years ago when I was looking. That's what I hear all the time, you know, that's what I hear, mm -hmm. I say it too, that I'm creating something that I wish I could have had then. And so, how did you find time? You know, you talk about blogging, and I'm, I'm, I'm a big multitasker, and I, I try to do everything, but how do you, I'm also a writer, how do you find time? How did you find time during that time to write and blog and, and really pay attention to that? Because I, I wonder if people have that, you know, overwhelming sort of like, I can't do anything. How could I sit down and blog? And, you know. Yeah, I had no business doing it, frankly. Um, <laughs> start, starting a business during all of this, I had no business. And I'd be lying if I didn't say, you know, a couple times a month, I would say, I'm just going to phone it in at my day job. What am I doing here? But, you know, part of it was I wanted to create something so that I could get out of my day job and have more flexibility to care for my mom. You ask how I found the time. I actually like to change the verb to creating the time because you're not going to find the time. Nobody's going to find time for the things that they want to do. And that is something that I that I coach people on because it's got to it requires a, a very focused intention to make it happen. So I am a very pragmatic person. I, I laid out kind of everything that I had on my plate. 
tried to figure out, you know, what I could give up, um, you know, and say no to, tried to figure out where I could get more help. Uh, and look, seeking these little nuggets of time where I um, knew that if I could fuel myself, I would have more of the energy and peace of mind to kind of sustain this difficult journey of caregiving. So I carved it out, I scheduled it on my calendar. And when I was working full time, what, what ended up working for my writing time, I like to write in the morning. And so I would get up early. Less people need your attention at 5, 6 a.m. in the morning. And so I would get up. I would go to Starbucks. I would look forward, you know, a couple times a week on my Wednesdays and Fridays. I would see the same people there creating my own little Starbucks community. And um, it was just, it was, it was, I called it happy, healthy time. And my kids and my husband would even ask me about it. You know, it was on the family calendar. Hey, how was your happy, healthy time this morning? What did you do? Um, and it, it, it sustained me and it just helped me um, process everything that was going on in real time with caregiving. And, you know, I didn't have any demands. It wasn't like anybody was paying me to write or do anything. So I could right. just, if it didn't happen, it didn't happen because life is messy. And when you're in the middle of something like that, uh, you know, gaining perspective is really difficult, isn't it? To, to like kind of say where, where, where in my life, you know, it's, it's coming up with priorities mm -hmm. and... Do you, and you're also a caregiver for your children and for your husband. It's like, how do you gain perspective and say, what this is, how do you compartmentalize and know exactly what to do? Or, does, or was that just, you just figured it out as you went? Well, it didn't, yeah, it, it was a, and I'm still figuring it out, frankly. Like, we're all figuring it out. Uh, I just knew what I was doing wasn't working. And I didn't like who I was looking at in the mirror. And I thought, we, this, is, this has got to be different. Uh, and then again, like I had this 40 hour week job, I wanted flexibility and, you know, of course I was, you know, dreaming of being this overnight, ex uh, online success. Well, it's, it's over six years later, I have just resigned from my corporate job this past May and I'm, and Yay. I gave my, well, I gave myself a huge pay cut at that too. So, but it's, you know, you get to this point where it's like, okay, let's leap and see what happens here. Um, right. But it, it was intentional. It was, and it was like you yeah. said, Don. Just let me let me try on this thing, and I would learn things from people. And the writing was a big part of my self care. But I also, um, you know, in in the beginning, it was very physical, which I think a lot of caregivers you think about the physical self care right away. The I need to eat better. I need to sleep better. I need to exercise, and that was it for me too. Like I was very intense in this physical self-care journey but then over the years i'm thinking no caregiving self-care is is different it's about you know asking for help is and receiving help as self-care managing expectations and setting boundaries and helping my loved one advocate for themselves and my kids be independent like that's self-care because that's going to give me more time more breathing space and white space in my life so it's um i look at now i have like eight categories of self-care you know it's it's professional, it's social, it's spiritual, emotional, uh, practical, financial, physical. I'm, th I'm sure I'm missing some, but there's, you know, it's, it's a, there are a lot of spokes to that self-care wheel. I love this. I needed you then. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Because I also, I was, I had, a, I had, was going through a divorce when my mom was uh, diagnosed and, and my stepfather passed away her best friend who also had a cock they both were a cocktail as well <laughs> so yeah and so uh when it was there was so much and i had a 16 year old daughter who you know i was moving brought my mom into my place and i was i i i literally was just like and trying to like you know pretend like everything was great like i wasn't going to change at all like i was going to keep my my sunny personality and and I figured sleep, who needs sleep? I went so many nights without sleep. Then it, and I started wondering why I was gaining weight because I'd never really gained weight before. And I was like, oh, so when you don't sleep and you're under stress, your cortisol goes Psh. Yes. And yeah, and I was not a healthy girl. I was, you know, but I thought I could do it all. You really can't. You really can't. So you have no. to, you really have to prior, prioritize. And, and, and trust me, I mean, when I look back on it, there, there it is not a perfect picture. There are lots of tears involved and, you know, 
I had panic attacks, you know, my anxiety was through the, you know, I had to take care of my own health. I have hypothyroidism and anxi generalized anxiety. And, and those were, you know, all, so it was partly, you know, getting support, medication, all of that is, is part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and just figuring it out. But that's why I keep saying like trying it on because I would, I would be fat. It was almost like this journey of self-discovery too, because, you know, I'd hear people say, oh, well, aromatherapy is helping me or meditation. And I thought, well, let me try that. Like, I'm desperate here, people. Let me try anything to see if this will work for me. So try it on. Sometimes it fit. Sometimes it didn't. Sometimes I had to kind of keep at it. Um, and if it didn't work for me, then I discarded it. But it might work for someone else, too. So I might still mm -hmm. share share about that. And, you know, there's also time in your life for Netflix and Hulu to be self care. So we, you need it all. You Heck know, yeah. it's, it's, and really getting in tune with my emotions, um, which was not easy. And it's still not easy, frankly. Like, that's the part that I think is, is my, the one I struggle with the most. So this is a really big part of caregiving is to, is the guilt factor mm -hmm. that when you do care for yourself, where you do want to just stop and watch Netflix for an hour or maybe go out to dinner or something. You feel guilty. You think that people are judging you because why aren't you there caregiving? Just really, how do you get around that? How do you, or do you ever? I mean, you manage it. I think you, 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 you would name the feeling, you know, I'm feeling guilty. Sometimes guilt can be a good thing, right? It, you you want to be the person that's going to um, show up for other people. But sometimes it is unfounded. And I know for me, I had to, you know, kind of, I said, I refuse to take the guilt trip. Um, you know, I deserve this. I need this. I know I'm going to show up as a better caregiver when I put some fuel in my body and really energize myself that I'm going to not lose my patience. I'm not going to be resentful. Um, and so now I tell people and I tell myself, like when the, when the big G word comes up of guilt, replace it with another G word, which is grace and just give yourself some freaking grace. Cause it's, oh, I love that. it's hard. I love that. I love that. I have two daughters and I still throw, I still deal with the G word because you know, my mom's at, at a assisted living. And as you know, like during, during this COVID, it's been so hard. Mm. It does it, that they don't make it easy on you to go and, and, you know, keep stay in connection with your, with your, parent or your loved one no and so and zoom does not cut it very well with um someone with dementia in the later stages of dementia it's really difficult although i do do it every week but you know i i feel guilt now that they've opened it up and you can make appointments to see you know your parent or your loved one and i i will feel guilty if i don't go sometimes and my daughters have to give me a reality check and say mom it's okay you can skip a. T <laughs> it's okay. You're one person. You're one. Yeah, you know, yeah. and 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 that, and then sometimes we'll d we'll talk through that thing too. It's like, well, what would make you feel less guilty? Well, why do you feel guilty? Why well, feel guilty because my mom or my dad is all alone in this facility, and I'm just picturing them them sitting there, you know, and um, well, what what could be true instead of you be being the one that always go there? What what else could be? Maybe you can set up a, a schedule where you know five days a week, seven days a week, you've got cousins and aunts and uncles and siblings and neighbors and who else might want to be a part of that? And if you could kind of spread out that love, um, then you know that there's a touch point with your mom every day. And and what does that feel like for you to um, to do that? And people are glad to do it. You know, that's such a great idea. That's such a great idea because I, I, I have a very small uh, nuclear family, you know, and so but it's interesting because through my film and I've met so many people that have that's that have asked me, can I would you can I come and meet your mom and can I visit her and can I give her a hug and and right Don like straight like people I don't even know I've met them and I, I always yeah. say. Oh my gosh! And some yes, have before COVID. Some did. Uh, they did, that, and you know, yeah. And I, I, mean, now I would imagine that if you reach you out, yeah. yeah, I imagine if you reach out to people, then just like, like said, you know, is there, you know, because it it, it is a gift to yourself too, because you do feel so good when you leave, right? Yes, you really do. Yes, you do. You 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 want to know that they're okay. 
Um, another idea to address the loneliness is in the companionship, um, other than phone calls, is I had um, a peer influencer of ours in the caregiving space. She has an Amazon wish list for her loved one, and they will just get like little packages in the mail. Like, how cool is that? Just like some little, um, you know, maybe a, a little paint, something that's, you know, dementia friendly, of course. Um, right. And but what a neat thing to have this wish list of things that that, you know, your loved one would enjoy um, and that other people could um, be a part of that. And it makes them feel good. That's so great. Oh, I love that so much. So so you put together it's almost like a um, you're you're uh, like a wedding registry. or Yes. Something. So you're it's right. So you yeah. register for all these. That is beautiful. That's yes. so awesome. Play, you know, like I know my mom, I don't know if my mom had dementia because at one point, uh, it was, what was the point? She was bedridden, you know, last two years of hospice, but definitely a lot of cognitive issues. We never, you know, went through the testing with her, um, but she had a lot of adventures, I call them. And, <laughs> you know, we would have some, you know, you have to kind of pivot and figure out like, well, what, what, what can mom and I do together now? And you know, she always loved her coffee. We would have coffee together, but we would play Play-Doh. Um, sometimes I would send her, uh, I send her a healthy snack box and we would do like over the call, we would do a little unboxing of, you know, mom, what's in your snack box? And she didn't like all of them, but she would keep them aside. And then when people would come visit, you know, her hospice workers or, um, people that filled in for my sister, my sister was the full-time caregiver at that point. Uh, you know, it's just a nice little thing. So it, we, it takes a lot of creativity in caregiving. You just are constantly problem solving and a uh, lot of marketable skills there for people. Yes, a lot of trial and error. I spent a lot of time because we're filmmakers, so I put together this whole, like a video of my mom's favorite songs and and I and I edited together like all these like memories and things for her on a, to put into a frame, those frames that are, and I, I yes. found one that was mo motion sensi sensitive, so it would turn on from motion. And I, cause my mom is at that there, this stage, she wouldn't even know how to turn it on. Mm. And I realized you can't really depend on, you know, the, the caregivers are busy and as much as they, they want to do everything, they can't. So, but you know, I realized that, you know, as much as I put that, I put a lot of time and effort into that, it, it doesn't go on all the time and you have to remind people mm -hmm. and can you make sure it's plugged in and, you know, it's, it's, so you have to try to find things that, that are easy and not, it doesn't put any responsibility on other people, but you know, it, it is, it is a trial and error and, um, especially for people that are at that stage mm -hmm. that can't do anything for themselves. So, which is an, do you have any advice for that stage only because I'm being selfish and asking <laughs> you mean cognitively or physically or both because like just both yeah, yeah, just, both in just this both. Case. yeah. I mean you know my, like how can you stay it, stay in touch with them how can we keep them like we don't know what they're thinking we don't know what they're feeling but I know that when I connect with my mom I can get her to say if I can get her to say I love you or gosh damn it you're pretty I'm like I did it Ta da! Mm -hmm. Superstar, I I got I got a response, you know. Yeah, I think just keep you know keep keep trying different things that would work. I know my mom again was bedridden, um, so mobility challenged and, and cognitive, and, and then she started losing her eyesight because like reading was a big thing for her, and then that disappeared. Um, you know, for us, we music was a big way that we engaged with her. Um, she loved those dang righteous brothers and, you know, to the point that I don't like them anymore. So it's like, you know, uh, but you know, sending the boxes, doing the FaceTime calls and it was used to crack me up because she could never get her whole face in the, you know, I'd, I'd get little snippets oh, yeah. of her of face up the nose Yes, yeah. or mom, your napkin or your hand <laughs> is over it or, you know, something, but, and, uh, you know, just play like little games together, you know, um, finish the sentence or um, name that tune or, you know, just in ways that you can engage, particularly for me, it was long distance, mostly at that point, you know, at, at that point, I was going up quarterly to help relieve my sister and give her some support. Um, mm -hmm. Again, yeah, managing those expectations and talking to family members to see when we could all go together. Um, I'm trying to think we did place, you know, we played 
play games. Uh, moms were before she was losing the eyesight, you know, but even it's like going back to some of the games that even I used to play with my kids, like connect Four. Yeah. And she, and she wouldn't get it right all the time. And I just, you just roll with it. You're like, let's make it, exactly. let's make a pattern with it. Let's put all the red here. Let's, you know, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, perfect. Uh, no. And, and Play-Doh was another thing. So there was, you know, we had our things that we would try to do together. Right. It's being in tune with, you know, because you can you can get advice from people, you know, and, and these are things you can do. But really being in tune with who they are or who they were you know, and really relating back to the things in their past that you can maybe tap into. You know, when you talk about playing games, maybe it's a game that you played when you were a kid. Maybe she played with you. Uh, you know, things that really Parties? relate to them that maybe, <laughs> you know what, maybe, <laughs> I don't know, you know, if there was a, if you played cribbage with each other when you were a kid, whatever, it's just, and, and really being in tune with, like you say, the music they love, yes. the, the, you know, the, the memories that they can hopefully tap into as opposed to just saying, oh, I will do this because I, I read that somewhere. Right. It's really, you know, take, taking that information and making it personal. Also being being cognitive of what stage they're at and what skills they have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think, you know, I, I wonder if you hear this from some people that you talk to that for me, I had to realize that, you know, my mom was such a pistol and so, so classy and, you know, smart and, and, you know, would never want to be living like this, mm -hmm. like how she says, I'm putting quote air quotes around it. But, and then I would feel part of me was like, my mom would hate this, and then I realized, but that, but that's not my mom anymore. This is my mom, right? And this is what's good for her now, and it's not disrespectful. It is respectful to to connect with her at the at the at the stage and level that she can mm -hmm. connect. And if it's just looking at her and singing the same songs over and over, my mom was a singer. So I, and I have her, I have her uh, songs, you know, that were recorded, her recordings, and we'll, we go ad nauseum, like you want to, I don't want to hear Gershwin anymore, okay? <laughs> but, you know, we do it, and it makes her happy. I know it does. Yes, even, you know, even when mom couldn't read anymore, we would still talk about books. Um, you know, she would, I would tell her what I was reading. Um, you know, and we would talk through the plot lines or some of her favorite books, we would rehash some of those or, you know, I'd read her, read her my mom was an author um, and she wrote oh. children's books. And so we would read her, her book to her. Um, and, uh, you know, and then just like you said, and then way we memorialized her too on that topic, we um, wanted to do something physical. And so we created a little free library in our um, my parents lived in Michigan and off a little small lake. And so we have a little free library in mom's memory um, that is so fun where we oh, put her books awesome. in there and then the community has it. And we talked about that. We, we told her, we said, we're, we're going to do this for you. And, and isn't this going to be great? Like we're going to, you know, keep this reading alive in this community. And so, yes, I think. What did she, what did she say when she you loved it? That? She loved it. Oh, because I did. It's so funny because my mom differently my mom has dementia so when I, I told her about the film and I said mom you know every time I'd go to see her I'd say so you know the film everyone's loving it and they and you're like you're you're famous and she'd go why and I'd go because you're fantastic and she'd go eh, that's true <laughs> <laughs> yes I mean and then but sometimes I would think like she would say things about old boyfriends or you know their relationship with their husband and I'm like I'm always thinking like what are what am I gonna say when if this were to happen to me like you know am I gonna be bringing up these old old romances from the past and sometimes she'd want to follow through with them and you know let's let's call them let's oh, oh geez oh. you know it's you, you get in some sticky situations redirect <laughs> Let, so. yes yeah oh let's do it tomorrow yeah we'll get right on that yeah, tomorrow yeah. yeah we'll see left him a message yes yeah. I know I know <laughs> Therapeutic fibbing, right? Is that what you call it? Yes. I just call it a lie. <laughs> yeah, just lie. Lie, lie, Lies lie. of love, though, right? Like you're doing it out of love. Um, it's called a, yeah, call are. it a love lie. It's a love exactly. lie. Exactly. <laughs> you know, my mom would see uh -huh. dead people all the time. And, you know, she'd talk about my dad, my aunt. You know, hey, I remember one time she'd say, let's uh, – 
hey, well, we're going to pick up some pizza. We'll be right back in 10 minutes, Mom. So, okay, take Nancy. Nancy's been dead for 10 years, but great idea. We're going to take her with us. I, she needs to get out of the house. So <laughs> yeah, just go with isn't it. it. But that's isn't leaning it? in. That's not – because if you push against it, it's going to cause confusion and, yeah. and agitation, and there's no reason to no do reason. it. No reason. Really yeah. no reason. Yeah. yeah, but we learn that. You know, when, we, when, we, when it first all hits us, we, we are – we don't know anything about it. You know, how many times I said to my mom, mom, you know, I've told you that a hundred times, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, and I want to, I, Don knows this, like when we were looking back at when we were, we put some outtakes at, in our credit crawl from our film and, you know, I wanted to be honest and just so people could see really, you know, that, that we were really being honest in the film. And I had like, so mom, what day is it? What year? And my mom would go, I don't know, <laughs> you know, and I think, oh, my God, I hate me. Why was I asking her that? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. But at the time I was doing it because I love her so much and I wanted to, like, keep her sharp. I thought mm-hmm. I could keep her sharp, you know, and I couldn't. And, and teach her. You'll, you'll teach her out of it. Yes. <laughs> you'll, yeah, no, you'll, yeah. you'll give her the, all the information so she'll know now, and it doesn't Yes. Work. I kept it telling her, Mom, you have way. Alzheimer's, I'm gonna, but I got your back. We're going to beat this. We're gonna yeah, if they had a broken arm, you wouldn't expect them to, you know, write what they're right, if they're right-handed. And so somehow we have to kind of get to that point in our caregiving journey. We're like, oh, this is similar to that. Like, I, I can't expect them to do this because it, they're not capable Um but yet they are capable of doing these new things, you know, some amazing exactly. stories, right? Of like people who've developed an art, um, beautiful artistic qualities um, yes. in, in their dementia journey. And I love those kinds of things that, you know, to grasp hold of those because um, it's almost like they're a little kid again, maybe in some ways. And so they're exploring their yeah their, their mm-hmm. pa- childhood passions, who knows? Yeah. yeah. Well, don't and get don't, bored with dad, it. Audio. Yeah. I was going to say, don't get bored if you've heard this a million times, but I, I, I liken it to Benjamin Button. Like, mm. I think that their journey is very Benjamin Button. And so if you, if you frame it like that, then, then you can go with it peacefully because you go, ah, oh. because my daughter had a baby who's now almost two. And so, and, and they, for the first year of her life, which was all COVID, mm. they, she hadn't met my mom in person. So they were like, zooming with us every week and um you know i watch i watch them cross Aww. like that you know my dad was a really excellent artist he was tremendous he was uh, amazing but he stopped he stopped doing art you know in in his and his probably hadn't drawn anything for 20 years and he had dementia towards the end and all of a sudden he started drawing again. Now it wasn't good. It looked like a child had done it, uh-huh. but he was doing it again. He was tapping yeah. and, and it was fine. And so it was, you know, you looked at it and you go, that's beautiful because you know, he's doing that. He, it, something came back. So it's just like, they may find things that they'd never done or find things they haven't done forever. And just, in, and encourage that open the yeah. opportunity for them. If, if they did something and say, Hey, would you want to do this again? And they might, you know, they might. So. And by the way, they might not too. Yeah. So you, you know, and they might not, think, and it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. They might not, and you might go, God, you know, because I've tried that. I tried to take my mom when she was living with me to a, a choir, because my mom has got a mm. gorgeous voice, right? And um, I took her there, and she's like, "What? What is going on? Why am I here? <laughs> like, I don't want to be singing <laughs> with these people." And and, and I said. But mom, this is awesome. This is so good. You're such a good. She, yeah, let's go. Come on. And she did not want to be there. It's so frustrating go, so. because, mm-hmm. you know, and, and with your mom being in a, in a facility and my mom was in assisted living um, for a while, too. And, you know, we picked these amazing places, right? They've got all these amenities and they have a saltwater pool and, and senior uh, aerobics and bingo and movies and I couldn't even barely get her to go to the dining hall. It was a struggle to just go down and eat her meals. And um, she didn't like it. And, you know, I thought, this is good for you. you got to move around. It's part of your therapy, your physical, you know, moving. Um, but when they don't meet you halfway, it is very frustrating. Um, yes. And at the end of the day, they're adults, and you can't make them do things. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, like you said, trial and error. Mm-hmm. Right? 
trial and so, error. So you you created the uh, Just For You, a daily self-care care journal. So what is that? Tell us a little bit about that and what, what how does that help? So I created it because I wanted to give caregivers and just people in general a, a low-hanging grasp way to infuse self-care into their daily life. And I don't know about you, Susie, but I had found that a lot of caregivers lose themselves completely. Like they can't, they don't even know what their interests are anymore. They don't know what their dreams are. Um, they don't know what their favorite color is. Like, you know, there's just so much has been, focus has been put on other people. And so these have um, 365 daily prompts in it that just kind of get your brain thinking, you know, um, what is something you do that makes you feel confident or invincible? Um, mm. You spend most of your time thinking about whatever. And so there's, there, you know, a prompt for every day and lots, plenty of lines where they can write a sentence or a whole paragraph. I don't use mine every day. I pull it, you know, here and there and I um, add to it. Sometimes year after year, I look back and I see what I put on a previous year. And then in between the months, there's some fun um, self-care activity pages, like a, a oh. self-care word search or a, um, a bingo game or or um, a dreams page or a favorite songs list. So things like that. And I just, um, I just, I love the idea too that everybody's filling out that has the journal potentially on the same prompt on the same day. This this united force of self-care um, makes me smile. I love that. I love that. I love that. And and at the end of the day, you have this, you've memorialized your journey that you can share with other, you know, your family members, because I, I, I would do that because I look back at just, you know, random like writings that I put into journals that I never finished. Right. And I would say, oh my God, I remember that stage, but I wouldn't have remembered my feelings without looking back at it, you know, mm -hmm. and I think, I think it's important and it's, it's really, uh, it's valuable. Have you ever thought of sharing, or maybe you do on your website or podcast, having people share their journal parts of their journals to see, you know, what I would love uh, that if there's any, yeah, I think it would be really interesting. So people could kind of see what other people are going through and see if there's similarities. Yeah, or, we know, do a live um, at the end of my podcast. We do a lightning round where I ask my guests some prompts I just pick out um, so we can kind of get to know them. You know, you talk about self-care and you talk about caregiving. I, I want to keep things on the on the positive note. It's important to me to to not just focus on all the I want I want to. This is people's lives like we're living this life and it's it's a good life. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, we've all, we always say that, you know, that we the bad is a given. The bad parts are given. Mm -hmm. So why not just find the good, the silver lining, the positive, you know? It's why we refer to our film as a joyous look at Alzheimer's right. because why not? Why not? <laughs> What's the alternative? Yeah. Frame it. What's the alternative? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I've looked up every find every quote moments. there is, you know, for the for the silver lining, you know. <laughs> the diamonds come from carbon and you know, it's all those things, but it's true. They all it it, it there really is the gift and, and I, I remember um Oprah doing an interview with Eli Bizel, right? Who who um Yes, the that, night, the night. That was such a harrowing book, and and she said, you know, and what an amazing man becoming like this professor and just just so resilient, you know. Mm -hmm. And she said, what what would you say is is? And he's seen the most the hor the horrors of life. You can't see anything worse. And what is what it, what do you think the definition of happiness is? And he said, happiness was. A hundred percent, without a doubt, helping others, and and that is the true happiness that you get. And I didn't understand that. Not that I'm a selfish person, because I I love people, but I got that understanding, the clarity of of his sentence so much when I leaned into my mom and it leaned mm -hmm. into that role, and I realized, wow, it's true. Like that, you can't feel any better. And if you're lightening someone else's road, it just is. It just, there's nothing better. It just isn't. I love it. I yeah. love that. Yeah, so it's true. So I want to do a lightning round with you. Let's do it. Do it. Let's do it. So how do okay. you do it? How do you, yeah, how do you do so, it? 
you so um you'll answer the question susie um what activity i was gonna do, do it with you i was gonna do okay. it with you we can do it together how <laughs> well, about we don't that? have the okay. questions <laughs> um okay here's a here's a good one what's the best thing that's happened to you this week the best thing that's happened to me this week is um let's see well we had dinner with our with our star of our of our podcast who we only knew through virtual you know experience i got to see him in the flesh and blood got to you know we got to eat dinner together and break bread and it was beautiful that was such an it was such an amazing experience yeah, that, we met his wife yeah. you know we hadn't we had known him since last october yeah. and we had never met him that's that's amazing. It was, it was beautiful. I yeah. love that. Yeah. It was yeah. Cool. Mine, w- mine was uh, that it's, you know, mid-October, and I live in Atlanta, um, and I got together with some girlfriends, and she has a swimming pool, and we ha- we were in our bathing suits and in a swimming pool yesterday. Today is definitely fall, uh, but it was just this l- little final embrace of summer, uh, of course, with some cocktails and some chicken wings, and it was, it nice. was delightful. <laughs> Nice, Delightful. nice. Well, if I, was, if I ever meet yeah, you, I'm going to make you chicken wings was, that I make that are so amazing. I they like them are, crispy. They're really good. And crispy. I want mostly nope. flats. Mostly flats. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah, the yeah. drumsticks. No, yeah, you don't need the bones. No, I got you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, mine was that the, uh, the the Dodgers won, and they're going to go and uh, beat your Braves I know. Today. I'm wearing my they're Braves gonna... shirt. I'm ready for the game. <laughs> Ooh, She's it's going on. She's going to the it's game. It's on. Today. Yes. She's going. So uh, that's, it's my hot date with my hubby tonight. Um, okay, here's here's another question for y'all. What activity did you do as a child that brought you great joy? Dancing. I'm gonna say. Oh, go ahead. So yeah, I just, dancing. That's it, done dancing. Yeah. Which you, which you've never stopped. Yeah. You've never stopped. Well, I was gonna say it's, a lot of times it's a it's a good question to ask people when they don't know what to do now to find joy is like well what did you do you know when you were 10 um for me it was riding bikes in my little small town like we would go ride bikes and so i infuse a little bit of that now with my peloton bike you know i've got i can can get that because i can't really get out and ride around very easily where i live so it's um that's how i explore that how about you don i used to love i had a little portable tape recorder and I used to record my own like comedy shows and radio shows I'd just by myself and do all the voices and and have sit there with a record player next to me and and like so I have a laugh track I'd had an old <laughs> uh, comedy record that had an audience on it and every time I'd tell a joke I'd put the needle on it and you heard ha 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 and I'd pull it off and I'm still doing the same thing today we want to so. hear the ones from way <laughs> back though I would Oh, you do not. I, I literally, when I hear them, my toes actually curl and touch my heels. <laughs> They're so horrible. <laughs> but Don is a great, he, yeah, he does great voices. And so you know where it came from because he always has been that way. And, you know, I think we are born, born producers. We're best friends. We met each other uh, a thousand years ago. And, like, I was, throw, I was, like, planning big parties when I was, like, eight years old. So I was planning parties for my friends. I got Aww. this. I'm going to McDonald's. I rented like the juice thing, the frosty thing. I was like, no, I was always like doing a some. I was. It was Lucy at eight. She's producing. You yeah. love. Yeah, she and you producing. love a good theme. I think a theme party. A theme. theme. Oh, they're so it's, fun. Love a good theme party. Yes, you're my girl. You're my girl. Do you like a theme party? Yes. Yeah, my husband, he, we do a, um, my husband's Jewish and I am Christian and, but he's always the one that's thinking of the holiday theme party for, we do a white elephant, um, party with our friends and hilarious. Um, and last, what well, that we didn't have one last year, but we are doing one this year. We've done, I think, uh, plaid we've done, um, dress as your favorite, uh, holiday character, um, we've done candy cane, so we love to dress up and, um, and, and have theme parties around that. That's fantastic. Awesome. That's, I want to be your friend. <laughs> I want to come and dress in candy cane and come on. And just play. Yeah. People don't do yeah. that in LA. Su- Susie, you have, you have family in Atlanta, Susie. I do you have, have family, family in Atlanta. Oh, you've got to look me up next time you come for sure. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm no count on it. Count on I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Okay. I mean, if there's been many gifts from caregiving, like, and you'd mentioned that this has been, the, you know, the best and the worst time of your life, but like, 
I wouldn't trade it for the world. And people are like, what? But it's meeting like people like y'all and the guests that I've had on my podcast and like best thing ever. So yes, just- I agree. I agree. And it's opened the world up for us to, you know, like I have friends all over the world that I haven't even sat in a room with, but I love them like, like family. Mm-hmm. Right. From, from, from meeting them in the community and, and having from the, film. the film and I'm blessing yeah. of having social media and the ability to like, you know, talk virtually to people like this. This is, mm-hmm. it's, it's a gift. I get it's it. a cur- yeah. So I love it. I love it to bits too. It's really, it's, it's, yeah, I wouldn't have traded either. It's my whole life is, is better for it. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Poor Don though. <laughs> Poor Don had to put up with me as a friend. <laughs> Just dragged right along. <laughs> Whether he likes it or not. <laughs> but it's, it's, it has it's changed my perspective on, you know, uh, just going with, the flow. with Susie to visit her mom in, in the care facilities. You know, the fear that I have that walking in there the first time uh, and not wanting to be there and being surrounded by what you think are, you know, these people are crazy or they're, you know, something... And you find out they're just people mm-hmm. and they're just yeah. they're just in a different state and they just want love and they just want connection. And if nothing else as a caregiver, if you could just give love and connection, mm-hmm. you're halfway there. Mm-hmm. You're more than you're winning. There. Yes. So, yep, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. What are you so. working on now, Elizabeth? Well, um, you know, I'm trying to, to monetize this business. So I do speaking with uh, different employers I, that have employee resource groups. That's a big thing because I think employers are finally getting it, um, that they need to support the, their working caregivers. I also um, am working on a course, a video course, um, and I do a lot of content partnerships with different companies uh, that are trying to, you know, what I love to see is people are having products and services to help family caregivers and i want to help amplify them because it's a win-win like i help you you help me and we can we can all be stronger together um yeah yeah, so i have no i'll never be bored for sure like i've got a lot of ideas always brewing um lots of trello boards with ideas I, i to quiet my brain i gotta park it park it somewhere i see that i feel that from you what's your sign cancer you are a cancer. I hate my sign name. I want Why? to rebrand it. Well, oh, I want to rebrand I know. It's it. a bad sign but, name. Yes. Yeah. My brother's a cancer but also. cancers are I, so... I, I've never liked it. Emotional, are, moody. Yeah, yeah but also that's me. family-oriented, lo- loyal, and um, I, I was married. My first husband was cancer, so I, a cancer. I know that. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, you're right, all that. I would have said, I bet you have a lot of Virgo in you, too. I have a lot of Virgo in me, but I'm a Leo. But, okay. but my sun sign is a Leo, but everything else is Virgo, which is very, you know, uh, structured. And I and I make sure I get stuff done. But I love to GSD, get stuff done. Yes, yes. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. And I'm like, come on, everybody. Let's get stuff done. Let's go, go, go. So. <laughs> In order to do, I, I want to work hard, play hard. Like I want to yes. have, I want to play. And I feel like if I'm more organized and structured, I'm going to have more time for all of the good stuff. That's how I, that's how I rationalize it in my brain. But I do have to intentionally, like I can always be doing something and I have to coach myself. Um, you know, it's okay to just sit and do nothing. It's okay to do that. Okay. Suze, can you listen to this? <laughs> I'm, I don't have it down. I'm working on I, it. I, I cannot tell you. It's like there's times you just have to shut down. You have to. Don, uh, she does yeah. not understand that concept. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wait, can you? We're gonna sit down to watch something. You don't have to have your laptop and your phone also right on your lap. <laughs> you can just maybe just sit down and watch something. But that's not how she operates. And you know, I I love shutting down. In fact. It's well, you know it's a good things. show to practice that on, important. Susie. If you haven't watched it yet, is Game of Thrones. You got to pay attention. Oh, we've done. Oh, done that. We Been did, there, done we that. We binged it. We <laughs> binged literally it. binged all eight seasons. We uh, we binged all eight seasons over what, like two months? Oh, no. Yeah, that was a cool. I, like eight weeks. We got a. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I did. And then I did. Um, Outlander. Outlander. Oh, fan. I'm a fan. Oh my God, Jamie! Such a fan. Can we talk about Jamie, <laughs> please? I loved it. I couldn't get into the books, but I'm into the I'm into the series. 
Um, well, the, the books series, are a big yeah, commitment. So I binged that. I yeah. binged that like so crazy, fun. and I can't. I think they're doing a, another season, so I'm looking forward to it. But so, is there anything that we uh, haven't covered that you want to cover or say, or anything that you just kind of want to leave us with? I mean, I I think we covered a lot of ground, and we could obviously talk for days. Um, but I, you know, I would say if people want to connect and they want to learn more about the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast, the coaching services, the book happyhealthycaregiver.com check it out definitely check it out i love this woman i'm definitely thank you you. i do yes i don't just say that i i do well i guess we should we should wrap this up don what do we always say at the end of every show we say something that's so true and that is love is powerful love is contagious and love conquers alls and we're so happy you were able to join us today thank you again and thank you for listening. thank you this has been so fun thanks oh, thank you If you enjoyed this episode of Love Conquers Alls, please subscribe and rate and share with someone else who may need the information that we provide.